hello everyone i must welcome you all to our webinar series the b school insider all you need to know about your dream school and i'm kalyani your host for this webinar series so today our topic is xli jamshedpur uh, prep journey campus life academics and placements uh, we are going to be discussing some of the key points like uh, the test prep to the selection process at xli jamshedpur business management or human resource management what should you opt for placements at xli jamshedpur why xli uh, jamshedpur is the best destination for hrm xli versus iim uh, learn about uh, the uh, committees in the uh, uh, at xli and the infrastructure and life at xli uh, so uh, let's welcome our speakers today we have uh, angad singh matharu he is from pgd uh, Human Resource Management 2024 batch. We have Abhishek Kaushik from uh, PGD Human Resource Management 2023 batch. He'll be very soon joining McKinsey. Uh, we have Nikhil Nair. He is from uh, PGD Business Management 2023 batch. He'll be joining Bain and Company very soon. Uh, welcome all of you and thank you so much for being here today for the session. So let's start now from uh, the beginning. So uh, let's talk about the, uh, the ZAT score, interview selection process, uh, tips to ace and get selected at XLRI. So um, quickly, uh, you can talk about your uh, ZAT score. Uh, what was your uh, bachelor's degree in? Uh, were, uh, were you guys, uh, do you have any work experience or were you fresher when you were uh, applying for the MBA? So we can start from Angad, uh, then we can go to Abhishek, then Nikhil. Yeah, Angad. Sure. Thank you, Kalyani. Uh, hi, everyone. So I'm Angad Singh Matharu. Uh, my undergrads in law. I'm a lawyer from Symbiosis Law School, Pune. Uh, my ZAT score wasn't the best. It was a 96.33 percentile. Um, I think, yes, ma'am. So other than that, I'm, I don't have any work ex per se, like traditional work ex. However, ma'am, my fourth year of law school, I started my own enterprise. So I think that was my, it was a digital goods enterprise. And this is what, you know, motivated me to apply for my MBA. So that's a little bit about me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Great. Uh, yeah. Uh, Abhishek. Yes. So uh, thank you, Kalyani. So when I applied for ZAD, I had two years of work experience. I graduated from DTU as a civil engineer. Then I was working in oil and gas as a structural engineer. And my ZAD score was 98.81 percentile, just an average score. And I had both BM HR shortlist and I finally converted the HR one. Okay. Okay. So I'll come back to you regarding that question. How do you select and all that? Yeah. Uh, Nikhil. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Kalyani. Good morning, everyone. Happy to be here. Uh, so yeah, my ZAT score was 99.5358. I mean, I still remember that the only four digit decimal that I remember to the last decimal because I got it after years of toil. Uh, I qualified as a chartered accountant in 2016. Uh, I also obtained the financial risk manager designation. It's an international certification in 2019. Uh, I worked as a credit analyst for four years uh, from say 2017 to you know, 2021, just before joining Excel with uh, Crystal JM Financial and City. Uh, mm. Commerce graduate, which I you know completed alongside my CA. Okay. Uh, I had applied only for uh, you know the BM program. Uh, in the year that I converted because uh, HR did, was not, did not, you know, kind of add to my profile. At least that was the sense I had back then. I mm. maybe I have slightly different opinions now and yeah, we can discuss that later on as we proceed. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. So we have very uh, different backgrounds. So this, this would be interesting. Yeah. So let's uh, talk about, uh, okay. Is there any uh, ZAT related tips that, uh, you guys would like to uh, give uh, maybe one tip each as in um, how exactly uh, so were you all uh, preparing for cat as well before so if that was uh, that and then you know how much time you guys were preparing for that and was there any one particular section that you knew were concentrating more uh, how much time does it take so maybe you know angad uh, yeah angad you can start then abhishek and uh, nikhil you guys can pitch in Sure. So you are definitely prepared for CAT and ZAT at the same time. Uh, I started, however, really late. I started okay. in July end. And that's oh. something I would not advise, you know, anyone else to do. Because I just had like four to five months of very serious preparation. I also, as in some a lawyer, I haven't done maths for a really long time. 
so it was a five year gap i had you know to start hence my quant uh, like quant so definitely my weak point so mm-hmm. that is what i'd really recommend to the ms students please identify your strengths and weaknesses so i think cat and zat are exams of strategy you need to know where where can you hit a power when you when we wrote the power play for you and you know need to know when you need to just get through the section so for me verbal was my extremely strong point like i knew i'm going to get a 99.9 irrespective of the cat or zat whereas mm-hmm. quant i only had to make sure that i clear the cut off that is how i prepared um, i identified one of the easiest parts in quant arithmetic i focused on that i just wanted to get my the cut off cleared because then you can go to score high in dlr and verbal that's what i really recommend to you to maybe the exact opposite for you if you know you have strong a quant base why don't you focus heavily on quant get that 99% and above and then you know you can comfortably even have like a 95 or a 90 percentile you will get the call that is my one advice to aspirants okay yeah abhishek i think just to add on hmm. since i was an engineer back you know i i was comfortable with quants like opposite to angad and hmm. i was a bit struggling with verbal and specifically for zat the verbal the the benchmark of verbal is actually very high than uh, than cat so i one of the things which i tried was i was uh, trying the comprehension from gre gmat uh you know okay. books to actually prepare for a one level high hmm. people can actually try that if they feel uh, that hmm. they are not that comfortable with verbal okay okay yeah nikhil yeah right so uh, i mean to step back a little you asked you know whether we are preparing for cat as well so i believe hmm. the answer to that was yes for all of us Mm. because as a candidate you know the whole mba journey uh, in india at least to make it to a b school is extremely binary right either you mm. make it or you have to wait for at least let's say 12 months more right so mm. in such a scenario what makes sense for everybody universally is that you maximize your optionality whether it is in terms of exams whether it is in terms of colleges that you apply to programs within a college and so on yeah. right so that is one secondly yeah, as angad and i think abhishek have covered different things work for different people uh, right and what works for you you actually need to put in you know uh, you know few hours of practice over the multiple days to actually figure out what really works for you my strategy was similar to angad in the sense verbal was a strength uh, mm-hmm. quant again i had not seen for too long but then you know, by the time cat had kind of uh, on that by the day of the cat exam i was reasonably comfortable with quant but at the same time the decision making section in that that you know happens to be a completely different ball game as compared to dilr in uh, uh, cat right okay. so uh, dilr in cat used to be my cat is used so to say i never really could wrap my head around it no matter you know how much i work so i was happy to have something which is not dilr in that mm. right and when it comes to decision making you need to actually uh understand uh, the uh, you know xlri uh, line of thinking what exactly they want yeah. from you as a candidate and yeah put in the as you know it's not a linear game it mm. does not mean that you know somebody putting in 2x as will no more or do better than the one who's putting x or maybe half of x as well mm. right but you know whatever as you put in if you are uh, strategic you are directed towards the goal right and at the same time you are open to you know maybe slight uh, tweaks to your strategy i think that's the way to go about it okay hey uh, uh, dikhil you said something about uh, while taking that you had kept this thing in mind as in how what accelerate philosophy is uh, stands for and all how right. is that uh, related to the zac test as in when you are taking the test right no i uh, so what i said was ah. very specific to the decision making section which okay. is one of the three section okay right yeah. so mm. for verbal and quant i think abhishek and angad will also mm-hmm. agree you mm-hmm. more or less any other exam that you prepare as well i think okay. if you kind of just align yourself to mm-hmm. that uh, that space and level mm-hmm. of difficulty you're familiar with the section already right mm-hmm. whereas decision making is something which uh, i think only xlri or zat does it at this point in time Correct. right and uh, again you it's mcq based uh, uh, even for this section mm-hmm. right and the right answer often uh, ties down to a line of thinking you know a way uh, of you know arriving at a decision or you know what to do and what not to do Uh, so uh, this section actually aims to put you in the shoes of a decision maker right, right. so this is yeah. the situation yeah. these are your op- options mm-hmm. what is the right option uh, ideally would be subjective because you know all of us tend to think and act differently 
but mm. xlri ideally would want its candidate to think in a certain manner right and that to figure out you yeah. will have to understand how xlri thinks what they how they want you to think and approach a problem okay. yeah so that that's what i would say okay to. okay yeah i'll come back to you on that uh, so yeah so for the personal interview let's talk about like you know your personal experience and how did you prepare for it and yes of course you know keeping in mind xlri was like obviously you know you must have been sitting for other interviews too but when you were sitting for xlri was there anything specific that you guys had to think about like okay um yeah as nikhil said something about you know the philosophy and the ethos of that particular b school that i go that you're going to yeah so angad can you talk about your experience uh, uh with the personal interview and what were the kind of questions that were asked for a human resource uh were you asked actually more hrm related questions i mean since you were fresher uh, was there uh, questions regarding since you have a law background about you know ir and uh, you know in you know all that uh, labor law and all that were, were there right. questions like that yeah so mama actually gone into the interview preparing for all these questions which you said right now <laughs> IR, <laughs> yeah one of it was asked interestingly it was okay. 110% of behavioral interview okay. uh, we spoke a little bit about my enterprise also They were quite keen uh-huh. hmm. to know what I was doing, you know, with law and also trying to run a business. Hmm. They were interested in that. Uh, hmm. They also took up my or uh, national level debating quite a lot. Like they were very interested to see that I've debated at a national level. So there are oh, yeah. a few questions on that. Hmm. Uh, and ma'am, they asked me a very interesting question that uh, define integrity for you. So okay. ma'am, Excelar, I think is very famous for these kind of questions, which you know, hmm. no other. School panels want to ask you. Mm-hmm. So I think, ma'am, all I'm going to say is expect the unexpected in Excel. Right? Uh, you prepare for, ma'am, hundred questions. They will ask you the hundred and one question you're not prepared. But okay. I think uh, confidence mm-hmm. is really important, right? Mm-hmm. Like you need to, and that, ma'am, that means that you know, don't lie. Because yeah. Because, ma'am, faculties, professors are some of the India's best professors. They have mm-hmm. decades of experience taking interviews. Okay. They will ma'am, immediately know if a candidate is not sincere. Mm-hmm. and if that happens on the interview is gone you may be the best candidate but if they see that you know you are trying to lie a little bit or trying to embellish your achievements they will immediately will be a no so i think that is what you need to understand about xlr ethics and integrity ma'am are not just mm-hmm. words that they say they actually live by these two words that is my advice to panelists to the to the attendees yeah uh, wait, tell me uh, how many uh, panelists were there for your interview out of three panel Okay, three panel. Uh, okay, okay. And how long was the interview for? Was it an online interview for you? Yes, it was online. It wasn't yeah. very long. Twenty minutes. Twenty oh, minutes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Abhishek. So yeah, yeah and and also yeah, in your case, you are an engineer. Maximum amount of attendees are actually with your background, yeah. and some, of course, you know, of also of Nikhil's background. But yeah, I mean, for you to uh, from engineering to uh human right. resource yeah how were were the questions regarding that yeah can you just yeah take us through so that? i had both both of my interviews were three <laughs> panel interviews and they went okay. almost half an hour sort of interview mm. for the i have i first had my hr interview back then and yeah. uh i did prepare a lot of things as angad said but eventually they asked me since i was working back then it was a very basic question of what kind of hr process did you see recently in your organization mm-hmm. and what are your thoughts on that what do you think they did wrong they are doing wrong or what do you think they can improve so i remember i talked about my appraisal back then performance management just happened and we discussed over it for a while okay uh, like what okay. are my thoughts as an in, as a line person over there mm-hmm. and then essentially we talked about it for some time and then there were few behavioral questions Like how do you deal with your managers conflict? How do you deal conflict with your managers? A lot of questions around this, mm-hmm. and then the interview was done. I mean, it was a very smooth interview for HR, whereas okay. the opposite happened with the BM one. <laughs> I I had a little bit of NGO experience back then, and yeah. uh, since I was trying to align it with the Exceller I ethos, I was trying to put it forward. and one of the mm-hmm. questions i answered based on the injo the question questionnaire which they shared before interview okay so uh, i and i remember the moment i entered into the bm interview one of the professors 
directly started blasting me for the NGO experience and he was like, it's kind of fake and this, that and it really oh. went haywire over there. Okay. I was, I remember I was at calm throughout the interview, but it, it's like it can go anywhere, right? So uh-huh. essentially by the end of the interview, we were discussing deep philosophy. I remember there was one question of, uh, can you make an equation for happiness in life and this, that. So it just went anywhere. Okay. And so, after, uh, specifically, yeah. you, whatever you practiced or you, <laughs> you I thought prepared, I was preparing didn't... for op, ops based of uh, based yeah. interview because I had a work ex in oil and gas, uh-huh. and it did not go anywhere near that. I, I mean, it didn't go that well, which I was very mm. clear about. Right. And uh, of course, I was a BM. Uh, I got rejected from Jamshedpur BM back then. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that okay. was it. Yeah, Abhishek. Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, Nikhil. Yeah, so three panel uh, interview lasted mm-hmm. about 20-25 minutes. And you had specifically gone only for BM, right? Yeah, so yeah. at that point, you know, I used to think given my background, uh, you know, me landing up in HR will only confuse people. You Correct. Know, to, yeah. This guy seems to Correct. be extremely scattered, Absolutely. right? So I had opted for BM, uh, so 20-25 minutes interview. I mm-hmm. think my, uh, what I've learned from, you know, others' experiences and Plus, I've had you know some experience giving these school interviews. Is that what they are looking for is authenticity, mm. right? I think Anger tried to cover it by saying that you don't lie and you know mm-hmm. you have to be confident, but at the same time you can't bluff. I think an authenticity in an interview setting is that whatever you claim to be, if you well and truly are, right? During those twenty minutes, yeah, right. uh, first of all, it is di- become difficult to kind of forget you for the panelists. Secondly, you naturally stand out because, you know, you have a clear identity and that was consistent in everything that you said, you claimed, you wrote in your SOP, uh, whatever you filled up, right? Mm. So, I remember, uh, so, and plus, uh, uh, these uh, professors also, they assume different roles in a setting. So, if there are three panelists, one of them is there to, you know, uh, trick you. The other one is like okay. unduly supportive of you, no matter you know, what you say. <laughs> okay. They'll say, no, no, you're right. I know yeah. where you, you are thinking well and all. <laughs> and there could be a third person who is extremely silent and just observing you and doing <laughs> okay. weird things like scratching their head, you know, putting their head down in between, showing disinterest, you know, just yeah, to right. rattle you. Mm. So, yeah, uh, yeah, no matter how much you pr- prepare and, you know, how much you rehearse, at mm. some point it becomes an extempore, right? So, mm. to begin with, so I had always said that, you know, I worked as a credit analyst uh, because I saw my father working as a banker. Mm. So, the first question was on that. Okay, so okay. tell tell me something about the banking system, and okay. this was in you know the uh, the first cycle of COVID, right? Oh, so okay, nothing, yeah. I mean, nothing was really looking good uh, back then. So that is how they started off. Then later on, they moved on to my work experience. The last section was you know more about they had made us fill an SOP, which was basically four questions, mm-hmm. and we had to answer to them, okay. right? So one of the professors he picked apart my answer. I put some numbers in the answer. To show that you know I'm very numerically savvy and whatnot, mm-hmm. but he kind of uh, picked up at the numbers and he said you know uh, this does not make sense and he presented his own numbers because that shows that he had actually gone through my SOP uh, you know googled a little bit mm-hmm. brought up his own numbers and so on. Mm-hmm. But end of the day, I think what prevailed, I think all of us prevailed was the fact that uh, they could see that we are real. Mm. Uh, that you know I mean though we were not perfect in let's say all of the 25 minutes. But at the same time, they saw something in us that, you know, they could be good candidates and, you know, good leaders later on after graduating from Excel. Okay. Okay. Uh, tell me, um, how do you select um, if, if somebody has already, maybe, you know, if somebody has got through both, then how do you select, how do you know back then, uh, even before you started going for classes that, you know, you're meant for HRM or you're meant for BM, uh, how to opt uh, for that? And also, the other question is, uh, like, you know how, Nikhil, you said something about that, uh, obviously, you know, if you would have also applied for HRM, it would have only showed how scattered your, you are uh, in your thought process for your career. So, uh, is that could be one of the tips, of course, like, you know, you need to be very, very careful about not to just, you know, go for, you know, that. So uh, how do you, uh, how do you select? And uh, Angad, I'll first ask you, 
how did you uh, would you uh, how did you select that you know you wanted to go for hr and not for bm and uh, what is that tip that you would like to give the attendees that how do they go for it which one should they select how to opt for it and then nikhil you can answer and then abhishek yeah Ma'am, for me, I think XLR only made the choice. Ki uh, you are an XLR candidate, and they didn't offer me a BM seat in the first place. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's a good way, like you know, <laughs> not to not to choose at all. Okay. Uh, Nikhil, do you have? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. First of all, if you have both uh, calls, right? If you converted hmm. both and you are yeah. contemplating, it's a good problem to have. Yeah. Right. Okay, uh, nobody, yeah. Yeah. I don't think anybody should sympathize with you because you have two, you know, <laughs> seats and one to accept and mm -hmm. one to reject. Mm -hmm. uh, while back then I thought I used to think that you know HR will not add uh, to my profile or you know there's no synergy at all. Correct. Yeah, uh, now I would say my op opinion is more balanced because I've seen people, uh, especially in Amdad's batch, who let's mm -hmm. say uh, were CAs by training just like me, but you know opted for the HR profile. Because the program, uh, HR program at Excel, first of all, it's not about just four HR rules. You have a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, adjacencies related to HR. There's a lot of HR uh, uh, strategy, HR consulting that comes in. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, so uh, that way Abhishek and I would essentially be doing, you know, similar rules in the first, uh, I think, 12 to 24 months, mm -hmm. right, in, in the organization that we're starting at. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. So, if uh, if you have both calls, how to go about it is that you connect with seniors who have similar background, and you take you know multiple points of view. You take different opinions uh, from both sides. You know, somebody who's done same background, gone for BM, same background, gone gone for HR, uh, had both the shortlist, both the calls, and so on. And no matter, I think, what you pick, uh, the next two years, that is when you land uh, in campus, what you do with the one you have actually uh, chosen, that will end up making the difference and, you know, which one of the two you opt mm. for. Okay. Uh, Abhishek, you want to add anything? I think Nikhil yeah. summarized it beautifully. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, there's a question about if AI, uh, so um, Angad and Abhishek, you guys can take this. If AI takes over HR jobs, will Excel MBA in HR stand out for jobs? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we keep getting a lot of AI questions these days and chat GPT, like the last session had too many chat GPT questions. Yeah, so uh, what do you think? Uh, how is, so uh, Abhishek, yeah, you, can you answer this as in how much of uh, ML and AI is affecting uh, human resource uh, uh, management as a job, as a opportunity for that matter, in the sense, uh, are there like lesser people that they need now in the market, in the job market, uh, because of all these? Uh, what are the challenges? And if there are advantages, then yeah, please. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I I like to look at it from the uh, you know you know the lens that AI ML actually does the you know the clerical work has actually been reduced for all of us. Mm -hmm. That's the pro actually that the pros right. of the you know the AI ML or the chat GPT. Mm. It's not like the chat GPT can do the strategy stuff for us to decide you know how will we actually uh, cater to the business requirements or what kind of you know staffing will we require or the mm. culture. And essentially I mean it's of course debatable but HR is actually one of the, you know, the, the, the function which is actually working with people and mm -hmm. in other, you know, in other function, let's say if someone is doing coding or something else, they can actually, you know, move on totally to this in the future. But being, you know, you'll always want to have a touch of human on the other side when you are facing problems or when you are onboarding people or mm -hmm. when you are actually deciding for the company, you can never just let it be or, you know, let it go for the chat gpt or ai ml i mean of course it's an enabler for all for all of us but definitely you know not threatening our jobs as such mm. is, is what i think mm, correct okay okay i'll just add one yeah thing, yeah uh, yes you know, which, uh, not yeah. just for in the perspective of jobs but mm. i think anything to do with in the whole you know fear about uh, ml and ai Mm. Right. So currently what's happening is a hype cycle, right? Everybody's talking about it. You open Twitter, at least there are 10 people saying 
these uh, things will change uh, you know your life forever and so on mm. so kishor biani spoke about in, in some other context he said there's something called as sturgeon's law right mm. that especially mm. when something is very very new 90% of that tends to be useless in a few years right because what you believed in was not actually real or let's say not very consequential uh, in the long yeah. run right so you, yeah. you can think of it this way our elders or you know our uh, 20 years back let's say mm. they were very worried when internet took over and Correct. you know you had the tech bubble and so on mm. you had hr back in the 90s and 80s you had hr right to the 2000s and the 2010s you will mm. you will have hr and you know all in people in all the other domain going forward also Correct. ai and ml when everything settles i think will probably have the same impact as internet had on our life Mm-hmm. it change everything forever i mean we are sitting in different places and connecting thanks to the exactly. internet yeah. yeah i could do something like that maybe you know 5 5 years down the line 10 years down the line but you still need four people and you know 200 odd panelists to conduct a session right so Correct. i think Correct. that address is yes. everything for one then for all i use yeah true <laughs> yes yeah yeah great yeah okay uh, okay let's talk about uh, the next let's move to the next section we'll talk about academics so in academics again now we will talk about first how different is the uh, the business management uh, program from a human resource management program in the sense of course we know these are two different streams but as in um, how much of uh, when do you select the electives uh, how much of uh, overlapping is there in the subjects uh, so maybe yeah angad can you take the first bit the human resource bit and the overlap and nikhil you can talk about the business management bit yeah sure ma'am so i think the uh, xlra hrm courses uh, it's an extremely rigorous course because i'm not only to be do a lot of core hr subjects hmm. we also do marketing we also do a little bit of finance we do operations we do some strategy courses so in my first time i've done it all that is the really good part about an xlra hrm mba it's extremely robust like you know there is no point that there is no concept that you are only going to do hr because i'm they develop you to be holistic leaders mm. they want us to be someone who not only looks at hr but also can understand the business part of things they want yeah. us to understand how to read a balance sheet they want to know uh, if you're sent to a factory how does operations you know basics of that part so i think the program is so well designed that ma'am any situation you are put in after your mba you mm. will have some idea of how to go about you know you will not be stuck that is what i i really liked about the program and my second year i've just joined my second year yeah. uh, so it's purely electives and mm-hmm. i have completely opted for a hrm plus strategy kind of you know mba like a lot of my subjects are strategy based so mm-hmm. i think that's a extremely good part about xlr is they allow you to ma'am explore a lot of options okay so that is mm-hmm. abhishek you want to say, uh, say something i mean the, one of the thoughts which i have is mm-hmm. that in the second year you you have the choice to you know elect whatever subjects you have the only condition is that you have to have some 18 credits out of 42 credits for hr besides mm-hmm. that you can just pick any subject which you want like i okay. i remember i picked game theory which is a very very different subject from hr mm-hmm. and you have all the liberty to move around and try different strategy marketing or any other courses which you have Correct. but of course the specialization is there with the hr and we do tend to cover it in our first year core ir courses okay okay uh, and and do you guys also um, get to pick uh, select certain subjects uh, from the bm um, as as in, in your electives and all if if you want to you know probably you know uh, get maybe a little bit more of uh, business strategy or something from the bm uh, yeah exactly so can you can you pick and choose in the okay. second year we can actually pick any of the subjects which we want the only condition is that hmm. i think six odd subjects out of the total should be of hr okay. besides that i hmm. think around eight or nine subjects were there from the bm side so i had a heavy mix of strategy and economics in okay. my second year rather than uh, mm. the hr subjects correct so you actually have the liberty to move around and try different courses okay mm. okay yeah nikhil right so i think in terms of rigor great very few mm. hr uh, ends up being more rigorous more intense mm. than bm in the first year mm. uh, because uh, bm has to do mandatory 63 grades that is you know 21 subjects over one year Okay. And uh, HR, uh, they have to do twenty-two, uh, and I mean there's an option to do more, right? 
Okay. And in the second year, obviously the lines get blurred, and you know we uh, end up choosing our electives, and a lot there are a lot of common electives as well, okay. especially the strategy one where BM and HR are, are part of the same classroom, the they take the same exam and so on, okay. and that is where the actual give and take happens, where you know you end up uh, you get to see for yourself that you know the kind of core domain knowledge that HR folks have, maybe you mm. lack, and maybe some of the diversity that you have in terms of, let's say, a finance or a pods and so on, okay. that is something maybe the HR folks are taking from us. So the first year, we tend to be in different silos. HR is doing its own thing. BM is doing its own thing. Mm. In the second year, uh, we sort of come together and, you know, exchange whatever we know, mm. right? And yeah, I think I agree with Angad that, you know, it's an extremely well thought of, well designed, well executed program, uh, both BM and HR. Mm -hmm. uh, which uh, works over the entire two years. But tell me, uh, can you also choose a subject from your from an HR subject uh, in your electives? Like how uh, Abhishek said, you know, he chose strategy. So can you choose, like, say, maybe I don't know, industry, uh, labor law, <laughs> or something, something? Yeah. So I mean, it's not a free hand per se. Uh, in okay. the first year of uh, itself, we have one uh, HR uh, core course that is there. Okay. We do have that. Right. In the second year, uh, no, we don't really uh, get to pick and pick, let's say, an IR or, you know, core HR sort of an elective. Mm. But at the same time, there are a lot of electives which straddle across domains, you know, which start with, let's say, some element of strategy, but you do have uh, an element of HR coming in. You have some legal angle there as well. Mm. Right. And that is where you uh, get to, you know, that is where the uh, lines, the knowledge, the domains get mixed. Right. Okay. You understand that, you know, when you look at a business problem at the end of the day, it's not siloed. You know, you don't have mm. just four uh, things that it is affecting. It is affecting the entire organization. Okay. Right. And yeah, so uh, it's not a free hand. But yeah, there are a lot of uh, adjacencies. You end up mixing a lot of uh, domains uh, in a very good way of course and yeah that that is very much happening okay um tell me why is uh, so this is again for abhishek and uh, uh, angad why is hrm and xlri ranked as the best and what is yeah why is xlri like if you have done human resource management from xlri then you're sorted it's that is how the industry looks at uh, XLRI HRM. So um, yeah, so what is it? Uh, how is it so different from the other uh, B schools? From the, all the other top B schools, uh, which has also got uh, yeah HR. Yeah, uh, Abhishek and Angad, Angad, you can pitch in. Abhishek, yeah, please. Uh, I think one of the reasons which I found or I felt during the two years is the kind of focus they have on the business side and not just okay. limiting people towards the uh, or giving a parochial view of HR. Mm. They don't look at, uh, you know, HR as if they, it's a support function, but it's a way to, you know, complete the strategy of the business or to achieve the strategy of the business. Mm. And they don't actually let us just, you know, uh, siloed in the HR function itself, but we are allowed to move around and as as I was telling you that in our second year, we can move around with the strategy or other subjects. Mm. So it's a good way to have a more comprehensive and well-rounded personality for HR where, you know, he or she is aware about what's, ha what's ha happening with the other functions and mm. not just living in some, let's say, delusional way of, uh, you know, of just being in their own function. Yeah, right. Besides that, I think, uh, XLRI being in Jamshedpur has had a very heavy, uh, you know, IR influence from Tata Steel. So I believe from the IR side or from the core IR courses, the profs or the, the atmosphere over there is heavily influenced towards HR. And I believe that certainly pushes us forward towards mm. being one of the better courses, I feel. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Angad, you would like to add anything? Definitely, ma'am. I think, as Abhishek said, mm -hmm. the, for me, it was the faculty, ma'am. Like, over the past mm -hmm. one year, I realized what, okay. what, what exceptional faculty actually, mm -hmm. now they teach is very different from what I've seen in my undergrad and my schooling. So, yeah. like, for instance, we got, like, law professors who've written books that are, you know, read by MBA students across India, and mm -hmm. they come and teach you. So, mm -hmm. ma'am, I think the HR profs are of completely different caliber 
they are very well respected in the industry also they go for you know they go for consulting to like nifty companies to give you know inputs on their hr policies mm. ma'am these people have a lot of experience in not only theory but also practical knowledge so our lectures are constantly filled with a mixture of theory plus you know business insights practical insights what they've had from their experience right. so that what ma'am completely i think sets up what the xlr hrm program from any other in the country mm. okay okay uh, let's uh now this question is for all all of you um xlri versus iams like um well of course you know we are talking about of course you know when we are talking about human resource hrm program definitely you know it's it's uh, way ahead the curve uh, as far as compared to any other iams but uh, let's also talk about the other program as well business management and all so yes yeah, so a lot of people um when you google it online you get to see a lot of things like people are comparing xlri with i am lucknow that's uh, at par so what is it so uh, how exactly um, yeah so xlri versus i am what would you say one thing about uh, nikhil yeah you can start one thing yeah uh, so first of all these are two different brands i think that's huh. the bottom line mm. right i think yeah. beyond that i mean if you are to buy a product for example let's mm. say a toothpaste or a shampoo yeah. right you don't really fixate so much over which brand or which name you actually <laughs> okay. look at what does it do and you know whether <laughs> it really uh, addresses what i need right mm. so both i mean i am a b and c uh, straight mm. where it's due they kind of pick themselves as the first three or the top mm. three or whatever mm. right from there on it becomes slightly subjective depends on uh, what is your prior background what is that you want out of the mba where okay. exactly do you want to land after the mba okay. right and it boils down to a different answer for different people okay. uh, and invariably uh, you know the entire process kind of filters you out in the sense that you land up at one of the places mm. and then you try and maximize whatever you have uh, you know at that one place Okay. But yeah, again, if you have multiple calls, it's a good problem to have. Then mm. you know you go the yeah. same way as BM mm. versus HRM, and you Fair can right. decide. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Anybody would like to pitch in anything? Say anything? Angad or Abhishek? Uh, then I'll ask you guys the next question, which is all about clubs and committees. Uh, okay, clubs and committees. Uh, again, uh, Excelri has uh, a particular club, Maxi, which is also. one of the oldest co curricular uh, yeah committee in the country which is like wow so uh, yeah so is is there anybody who is a member of maxi uh, anybody no okay so let's talk about the clubs and committees which are what are the uh, what are all the clubs and committees uh, who all are members of what uh, so angad you can start then abhishek and then nikhil angad if you can just tell us all the clubs and committees uh, that are there and then tell us uh yeah i mean you don't have to name all of them <laughs> just like a rough yeah right uh, <laughs> i'm think of it this way if there's a business activity i think xlr has a club for it so okay. you have a consulting okay. club you have a marketing mm. club you have human resource you have industrial relations what about have... innovation and entrepreneurship yes, is there an entrepreneurship, any... an entrepreneurship okay. cell as well uh, okay no. okay so mm. pretty much yeah. the interest okay. you have xlr i will you know try to Hmm. but do you have to be uh, is it compulsory to be part of any of the clubs and committees or you can be just stay away from it yeah? ma'am it's, it's up to you ma'am but uh, okay you can choose to stay away but lot of people i think most of us tend to apply for ah. joining a club okay. or a committee or a cell okay yeah. okay uh, and uh, which one are you member of so i'm in a uh, i was in academic committee and uh, the cultural committee it's called dracula So that was it. Looks into <laughs> looks into literature debating, music. Okay. Like, was okay. That. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Abhishek, which clubs and committees are you member of? Yeah. So I was part of Alcom uh, Alumni Committee of okay. Excel. Okay. And essentially, I mean, the as Angad said, the for every you know hobby or for every anything related to business, there's a club. there's a photography club there is even a public policy and you just mm. name it everything is there and there are mm. continuous events going on from one club to another where people are called from outside constantly like for alcom we used to conduct you know homecoming where previous batches 25 year batches used to come visit campus mm. multiple summer meets are there when students go for summer internship they they interact with different alums of excel 
uh, at you know different events mm-hmm. such okay. so there are a lot of committees and mm-hmm. a very happening life indeed Mm. Okay. Yeah, Nikhil, you are part of uh, the place com. Yes, Anything else? Yeah. Uh, do you get time to uh, have other <laughs> to be part of other clubs and committees? No, so as a rule, if you are part of the placement oh, committee, you cannot you are, be. Okay. Yeah. So there are twenty five, thirty committees overall on uh, okay. campus, right? Mm. So. Mm. Uh, difficult for any one person to list all of them down because there's okay, so yeah, many. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, let's take a uh, uh, one or two questions and then we'll move to internships and uh, yeah, internships and placements. Okay. Uh, also, yeah, I forgot to ask. Uh, what about uh, exchange programs? Um, are there exchange programs? Uh, Nikhil, can you tell us quickly? Yeah. So in term five, which is mm-hmm. let's say in your second year, maybe mm-hmm. once or three months down the line. Uh, so okay. XLRI has MOUs with uh, you know uh, certain foreign universities, okay. right? So one entire uh, trimester, one uh, term, you get to spend in. You go to that country. You are a student on campus in that particular university. Okay. And uh, you get to finish your grade. So you have to do forty-two credits. That is about fourteen subjects in hmm. uh, the second year. Okay. So out of that forty-two, I think you can do a handful of them. Uh, about nine grade, nine or twelve credits, I think. In mm-hmm. in that particular university, and then they transfer the, those credits here, mm-hmm. and that is counted as you know you having completed it at XLRI, but then okay. you get the whole uh, exposure of you know going to a different country, staying by yourself, mm-hmm. managing your expenses, and so on. And uh, Abhishek and I, I don't think we had that experience. I'm not sure mm-hmm. if Angad mm-hmm. is going to you know have that experience. Okay. But yeah, it is something. If you get an opportunity, you should very well try. It's a meritorious process. You need mm. to have certain grades, certain uh, you know credentials to be eligible for that. And then okay. there's a selection process by which okay. they say so okay. Okay, so there is bidding and all, is it? Okay. So not bidding exactly. You yeah. get to apply, and uh, okay. on what basis you finally get approved. That there's certain that criteria. Depends. Okay. And uh, accordingly, and there's a pecking order in the sense if you are the most eligible candidate applying mm-hmm. for foreign mm-hmm. exchange, then you get the best university, and okay. so on. Okay. Right. So it's okay. something worth trying. If you get a chance, you should make the most of it. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's uh, move to internships and placements quickly. Uh, if uh, Agad. You've had your internships, uh, yeah. So can you tell us uh, very briefly the internship process, and if you can tell a little bit about your experience, it's okay if you can't. But if you can just tell us the process, and uh, Nikhil, uh, if you can just take talk about the placement process since you are from the placement committee, and Abhishek, uh, you can talk about your uh, placement experience, yeah, with McKinsey, yeah. Uh, Angad. Sure, ma'am. So sure. I think uh, placements are probably the oh, most internship. Important. Internship. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Internships yeah. are the most important part of your first uh, semester. Okay. Uh, that's why I, I approached it, and I uh. think um, the placement committee, uh, and the CV committee played a huge role in you know helping all students in extra area get a very good internship. Like from ma'am, I think day one the committee is like especially the placement committee and the CRIPS, uh, the CV committee made it very clear that. Internship will you know will be the most important part of your first semester. There's a very structured approach to it, you know, right from handholding initially to they being there for every step of the process. Mm. So I think the support offered was extraordinary. Like I never expected you know seniors to be that supportive. Mm. They are there for every you know question you have about the process. Any doubts will be cleared. Uh, placement committee organizes several sessions. Mm. CV committee organizes several sessions. You have mentors okay. allocated to you. So rest assured to any you know um, like participant here, if mm. you are selected into XLRI, there will be tremendous support given to you from you know all aspects, especially your seniors. So mm. I think that was there's a coming to the actual process. Um, it's a very I think competitive process. It it lasts for just you know two to three days. The actual process where you know large amount of us are. Uh, allotted to like two internships, mm. so you don't sleep. I think for a week coming to that, mm-hmm. because of stress okay. also because of preparing also. Mm. You fill in several, you know, um, quizzes are there by companies. There are behavioral questions sent to you by companies. There are evaluations, uh, mock exams conducted by companies. So mm. you know, you are only doing that for you know two to three weeks coming coming to the date of the right. internship. You know, it's called easy. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that way. Yeah. Uh, but I think, ma'am, it uh, was one of the toughest things I've experienced in my life. Like I've never experienced that level of 
you know uh, stress i don't think anyone has honestly like any of you have worked okay. it those three okay. months the first three mm-hmm. months of xlrm i think prepare you for challenges come for, for the years when i know okay. you know once so i've died hopefully you know the yeah, yeah. so yeah. that's yeah yeah so abhishek is the second year uh, more chill is it for hrm i mean since you know hrm anyway seems like you know they uh, they have a more rigorous academic structure yeah i mean academically second year is a bit more chilled out because uh-huh. the other avenues to explore there are a lot of case competitions mm. which are going on okay. there are different other things which you can you know mm. move uh, you can try your hand at mm. that's why people oh. have diverse focus in the second mm. year okay yeah nikhil placement process very quickly and your experience uh was it a ppo for you yeah it was a ppo yeah, for me okay and I... abhishek you also a ppo no no i had you said okay so i'll cash. ask you yeah okay so I'll, oh yes yeah yeah your into yeah your internship was with cas so yeah so i'll ask you about your process placement uh, experience yeah uh, nikhil placement yeah. process yeah so what happened at excel i think much like a lot of the old ims that we mm. compare ourselves with it's Correct. a student driven process Uh, and xlri has two campuses one at jamshedpur the other one at delhi mm. it's also a campus agnostic process in the sense it happen, all happens in one go mm. uh, handled by the same team uh, similar infrastructure similar setup across both the campuses there's a lot of coordination which happens to you know keep uh, things in sync uh, in okay. terms of the chronology or like what exactly happens over uh, two years if we have to take the batch of 25 mm. you know just mm-hmm. started on campus they will have their uh, summer internship selection process somewhere mm. in the later half of the year uh, typically september october mm. right that is when they are selected uh, they finish their year one which is let's say march of 24 next year mm. Mm. Uh, april may and maybe the first couple of weeks of june is when they are doing their summer internship which is an 8 to 10 week sort of a stint right okay. they come back now so angad is now back to campus right mm. so we uh, so we you finish your second year so hmm. somewhere towards the end not exactly the end but say uh, uh, december january of 24 is when uh, the batch uh, uh, january of 25 december of 24 is when hmm. you know, the batch of 25 they'll appear for their final placement okay right so typically the ppo rate so to say hmm. anywhere between 30 and 45% depending on where the market is many factors come into play Mm. right so you can say safely about one third of the batch uh, you know gets placed or gets offers through their summer internship stint mm. the rest of the batch they appear for final placements and that is where they get their job offer okay 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 yeah can you uh, okay so yours was a ppo so uh, yeah. yeah yours was far more chilled that means yeah, i mean like you know while yeah, it, it running is, around yeah yeah i would, I would definitely yeah. call it a privilege because <laughs> yeah. uh, essentially at the end of year one somewhere a little mm. after the end of year one you are uh, communicated about your offer Hmm. and the whole of your second year you don't really have a uh, responsibility so to say right and you <laughs> yeah. handle your academic commitment yeah. and that's the end yeah. of it uh, because hmm. you uh, your mba journey kind of has already hmm. made sense for you because you know where you'll be joining eventually correct yeah okay yeah abhishek your experience so you interned with tas and then what happened right. yeah so i interned with air india as a tas intern and then mm. i did not get ppo i had a ppi for finals mm. and then essentially i got a consult shortlist and the consult day okay. the ppi was the for the finals and mm. essentially i had a mckinsey shortlist and it got converted so i got placed in the consult co- process itself okay for the finals placement post the consult there is almost one or two weeks of lateral placements which is going on which okay. happens for the experienced candidates like people having let's say 12 or 13 months there's a number which is calculated based on the average work ex of the batch okay. post which the candidates having such experience are placed in the lateral placements process mm-hmm. where the companies come in and then uh, moving on from the laterals there's the finals where uh, all sort of candidates which are left either from the work ex or freshers Are mm-hmm. essentially placed in a day or so, uh, mm-hmm. where all the companies, uh, you know, come in just like a day or two process. It's there in the SIEP. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, and what were the kind of questions? So you had to sit for the interview, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Right. Abhishek. So of course, so, I yeah. had a. Huh. 
shortlist uh, which essentially there were three cases hmm. uh, so in the consulting uh, firms they have a case based interview okay. which happens so hmm. there were three cases with three different partners and yes. uh, post that the results were declared so, so uh, were you trained for the as in uh, how did you prepare for it uh, so uh, majority of the you know majority of you are mba you are actually dealing with cases so all mm-hmm. of the classes are case yeah. based that you are given a case and then you discuss that with the with the profs and amongst the students itself mm-hmm. but specific to the preparation for the placement there's a you know well elaborated placement uh, prep which starts almost a month before where you are doing cases with your fellow uh, okay. you know fellow shortlisted candidates you do case with ppu candidates i did a lot of case with nikhil okay, okay. Yeah. Right <laughs> to, you know get uh, understand how to go about a case mm-hmm. you do case with the juniors and across across the spectrum of the batches you do cases with yeah. to practice and to get you know experience of the maximum industries and all of that Correct. which okay. essentially prepares you for the final day that is when you have the cases with the partners of the firm mm. okay okay great yeah great answer <laughs> is it possible to prepare for zat or cat if we are starting now so this is uh, yeah july uh, with self preparation i am also working full time uh Nikhil, oh. would you like to take? Oh, Abhishek, would you like to take? Who, who, who would like to take it? Angad, you want to answer? Just, okay, Abhishek, yeah. Just quickly answer. Ah. So, uh, I mean, it's really not that late. So there are good four, five months, six months, in fact. Mm. And mm. for that, even one more, definitely, there's enough time to prepare. And hmm. I think me and Nikhil were also working during our time. Yeah. So Correct. almost sixty, seventy percent of the students are from the you know the work ex who were working and then moved on to MBA. Hmm. So definitely, I'm sure if you know uh, if you'll manage things around, then the you can actually go ahead and you know do well in the exams as well. Okay. Uh, are there any committees that are beneficial uh, for future uh, networking post MBA? <laughs> anybody nikhil i think you if you learn networking as a skill right huh. uh, yes huh. i would say few committees have good exposure to the alumni network so for example okay. alumni committee which abhishek was part of hmm. you interact with a lot of very senior folks right from uh, people who completed their mba somewhere in 1980s and so on hmm. and you know you getting even five minutes with them is worth it uh, weight in gold but having said that if you learn networking as a skill in the in the sense that you learn how to be strategic how to be very clear in terms of what you are asking for and at the same time keeping it very uh, cordial and you you know you don't make it very precatory also because at the end of the day they kind of see it from a distance that you know if you are uh, too uh, let's say uh, too uh, agenda driven or you know you are too all over the place that kind of defeats the purpose so i think learning it as a skill is what uh, is useful and then you replicate it across places right with your mm. organization you work for uh let's say you go to an industry meet where you com- uh, you know coming across extremely like completely new people hmm. how you are able to network with you know 50 different new faces for the very hmm. first time learning that is i think what mba actually gives you a chance to uh, apart from that i think committees does not make that big a difference in the long run okay okay also i uh, i want to ask you for uh, placements uh, can an hr uh, student Uh, can an hr candidate sit for bm uh, interview yeah so uh, that that is decided entirely by the companies that are visiting uh, okay. so let's say if i talk about the latest process that you know the final process that mm-hmm. happened for the batch of 23 there were some 170 odd companies which uh, came to campus right mm-hmm. so every uh, recruiter has a right to stipulate what condition that, uh, they want to impose whether they want to look at only bm only hr both bm mm-hmm. and hr and it is safe to say that about close to 90% uh, of the companies they look at both as one single pool right yeah. and there are a lot of organizations that also come which want to hire for hr separately and bm separately so they can maybe look at bifurcated pool but the decision is entirely on the company and what the general trend we have seen is that companies also understand that you know uh, just because the person is from an hr program does mm-hmm. not mean that you know you necessarily need to limit them to an hr profile 
Correct. Right? Or Abhishek's uh, case, you know, being a, a very good example. Mm-hmm. So you see, uh, uh, you know, a lot of homogeneity. It's not absolute per se, but I would say in majority, 80 to 90 percent cases, mm-hmm. yeah, what uh, whatever BM is entitled to or what BM has a right to HR also mm-hmm. has an equal right. And vice versa. Okay. And Jamshedpur and uh, Delhi campus are having separate uh, placement uh, uh, process, as in the process must be the same, but the timing and all that. No, so it's, a, it's, it's the same process managed by the same team. So what happens okay. is, so if I give my uh, team the example, we are a mm. team of 14. Mm. We had 11 people from the Jamshedpur campus, three okay. people from the Delhi campus part of the team. Okay. Right. So for a, a lo- much like long parts of the year, those three folks were actually with us on the Jamshedpur campus, okay. coordinating so that you know everything happened at the same time for the Delhi candidates as well. Hmm. Right. So the timing, uh, what happens when the processes, w- what companies are visiting, all of that is heavily coordinated. Hmm. And I would say if you leave about say one or uh, maybe about 5% of the recruiters. Mm -hmm. The recruiters have also gotten the message that, you know, it's one single pool at the end of the day. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, So before we wrap up, let's uh, talk about a few questions for, uh, okay, tips from, okay, Angad, if you can give a tip or two on uh, SOP, uh, how do you write a perfect SOP? Uh, How do you prepare for it? And what are the tips for perfect SOP for yourself? Abhishek, uh, you can uh, talk about uh, the DM section. What are the tips for DM section? Uh, and Nikhil, you can talk about uh, overall, how do you handle the whole process, pressure, stress, and also um, people you know, who are preparing for CAT and then ZAT. You know, if CAT has gone bad, how do you stay focused for ZAT? You know, and all the other tests and all that. Yeah. Okay. Angad, you. Right. So I think uh, for all aspirants, please take your SOP writing extremely seriously. Mm. Uh, Nikhil mentioned, you know, prior, like they read every word. Mm. Like, just be assured that the faculty will read your SOP in great detail. They will form an opinion of you before, before that. So I think when I wrote my SOP, I spent... Like from the moment the SOP, you know, the portal was launched, I downloaded the questions and I started continuously, you know, thinking. So mm-hmm. I think SOP is a very extremely introspective process. You need to keep thinking about your life experiences. Talk to your closest friends. Talk to your any close faculty you may have, your parents mm-hmm. uh, who know you well. And, you know, discuss with them. That's what I did. And I think that worked very well because I could showcase my strengths in all the four questions. Mm-hmm. That I thought of them in such a way that to know I'm going to talk about one skill in one question, another one in another question. So please spend a lot of time on this. It is really important, you know, do not just think that one night may I'll pull an all nighter and write these questions. Mm-hmm. They will immediately know that a candidate has, you know, tried to they, they will not appreciate the fact that if they see a lack of effort. Be authentic. Mm-hmm. You know, I took a lot of effort to be as authentic as possible to show that you know I'm unique. XRI mm-hmm. looks for that. They want unique candidates. You know, like you can mm-hmm. see the three candidates here are yeah, they're people. all yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So mm-hmm. please showcase that. You know, if you have an achievement you're very proud of, try to put that in. If you think this mm-hmm. going to this this kind of skill will help in the managerial domain, try to put that in. So mm-hmm. that is my advice for SOP writing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Abhishek. Uh I think for the DM. Yeah. As you know, we already discussed that it's although it's very, very, you know, offbeat, it can go anywhere. But Mm. the only uh, thing that's constant is the line of thoughts that Mm. all the faculties which makes these questions want to test your line of thoughts, whether it's aligned with XLRI or not. Mm. Like as we say that, you know, that global responsible leaders and all of that, like we say that the at XLRI we are making global responsible leaders. So they want Mm. that, you know, are you thinking on such lines? So there must be a lot of ethical dilemmas in such uh, decision making questions. So mm. just try to align your thoughts and think from different angles, different perspectives that whether you are actually adhering to those ethos and values, it's just that at the end, you just have to look at it from the right perspective of integrity and all the, you know, the ethical dilemmas which you have, and you can go right in all those questions. Of course, there's a scope of error. And, mm. you know, while you are in the mocks, you should actually look at the, what's the logic behind that the answer has gone that way rather than just looking at it. Mm. And maybe that analysis can actually, you know, correct your course of action when you are preparing. 
Okay. So, uh, Abhishek, tell me when you were preparing for the DM specifically for Zach, how much time was uh, so after CAT and right. before Zach, is that time enough for you to take mocks and practice and all that? Or has it? To, uh, yeah, I think it's more than enough. We have a yeah. month or so, and mm. uh, essentially, you have to just prepare for you know five last year mocks you will go through okay. and you will try to analyze those DM sections. It's okay. more than enough. So that's okay. why I just focus on the quality of the thoughts, like, you know, why the answers are different than what I expected. Oh, so it's more on the analysis than on the groundwork. Correct. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, Nikhil. Yeah, sure. So uh, broadly, you know, what you can expect in the two years and how you mm. prepare for it. So there will be good and bad days. I mean, no matter how hard you work and how good you are, you will have your share of both highs and lows, right? So mm. what I would uh, recommend is that you have a close circle. I mean, you naturally form a circle no matter how introvert or you mm. know whether or not you are a party animal. You end up having a close set uh, naturally, right? Keep them mm. close. It's important. So when they have the low point, you're there for them. So like, mm. and, you know, they will re reciprocate when it's your time to, you know, let's say not your share of happy days and so on. Mm. Uh, important that you... Keep things in perspective in the sense that, you know, the ad is now taken by, I mean, Abhishek in my attempt, it was about 60,000 people. Now it's close to 90,001 lakh, right? And out of that, around mm -hmm. 600 people are selected across both campuses. That's yeah. the conversion rate of less than 1%, right? right? So any anyone who has landed up on campus uh, has to, you know, have at least some, uh, uh, you know, has uh, met certain criteria, has gone through a rigorous filter to land there. Right. So people in generally, you know, generally speaking are, you know, really, really good, right? Mm -hmm. So in mm -hmm. comparison, relatively speaking, if you fall short on a certain day, that does not necessarily mean that you're bad. It mm -hmm. is just that in that particular context, maybe you are lacking, right? And you get enough opportunities to make up for that. Mm -hmm. And essentially, these two years are, you know, uh, an attempt to make a business leader out of you, right? And mm -hmm. no business leader has will ever tell you that you know that entire 20 30 40 year career has been a song you have your share of difficult days and in fact there's the difficult days that actually make you you know better and uh, put you through a process of self discovery uh, you know help you realize talents and skill set that you yeah. were not aware that you had right so you go through the grind you keep people close and the yeah, youngest point is also uh, uh, highly recommended that you stay in touch with your family, right? It's mm. easy to think that, you know, maybe your parents won't understand the B-School environment, but at the end of the day, they do know you as a person, right? So they, their judgment on that front will be impeccable. Okay. Right? So yeah, mm. that is it. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, no two people are the same, no two stories are the same, right? So you do your thing and try and, you know, make the most out of it. Mm. Okay, yeah, great. Yeah, so uh, I would like to thank all the attendees for all the questions. And I would like to thank all the uh, the panelists. Uh, thank you, Angad. Thank you, Abhishek. And thank you, Nikhil. Thank you so much for giving such insights on Excel Rajam Shetpur. Thank you.